The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. And by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Create with confidence. The project series you're about to watch was taken from the Wood Whisperer Guild archive. Now, the Wood Whisperer Guild is the paid membership portion of the Wood Whisperer site. And it's changed a lot over the years. When we first started, it was really just focused on uh, just whatever random topics I could come up with, just extra video content. Since then, it's evolved into a very project-focused series of videos that we do a couple times a year. For instance, right now, we're working on this chair. It's a green and green inspired Adirondack chair. And the videos cover every possible detail, multiple ways of doing things. It's just a really fun experience. And especially if you're just learning woodworking, seeing it laid out this way is really, really helpful. Now, the interesting thing is the video you're about to watch is on the wall hanging tool chest. Now that was something that was before we came up with the guild build idea. So essentially this chest was really the inspiration for the guild build concept. So you'll notice we go through a lot more in terms of this, you know, sort of describing the logic behind the, the planning, the design, and also showing all the mistakes and all the bad decisions that I made and having you sort of walk through that process with me. Eventually that idea blossomed into what we now know as a Wood Whisperer guild build. So I hope you enjoy this series, and if you want to learn more about the Wood Whisperer Guild, go to woodwhispererguild.com. Thanks for watching. Now, believe it or not, this is where most of my projects start, right in the kitchen. The kitchen table is nice and big. There's plenty of room to spread out. I've got my laptop here. I've got all my drawing materials, my big giant crazy triangle, and all my notes. And all I need to do is start drawing, and I've got the computer right here for reference. If I want to use SketchUp, I can do that too. Now there are a couple different ways you could take this project. You could try to just make a really beautiful wall hanging cabinet, or you can go all the way on the other extreme and design it purely for functionality. Maybe even do something in the middle where it's a little bit of both. You know, for me, I'm just kind of tired of design rules. In fact, design rules kind of make me sleepy. Well, good morning, class. Today, we are going to talk about the golden ratio. It's 1.618033. 1 a plus B over A equals A over B equals little thingy. A plus B is to A as to A is to B. So one more time, A plus B is to A. Mr. Spagnuolo, are you listening to me? <gasps> you think this is easy to sit through? Why don't you try it? 1.618033988. Three, now for most people, there's a hump at the beginning of a project that's a little bit difficult to get over. Sometimes just getting it going is the hardest part. So what I like to do is list all of the things that I know, the things that are constants. Because once you get those down, they help guide the things that you don't know or point out the things that you don't know. It makes them more obvious. So let's go over that quickly and I'll show you some of the things that I know that are absolutes at this point. Overall, we want this whole thing to pretty much be plywood. I'm even going to let the exposed edges just show because I'm kind of curious what it might look like if I use like a Baltic birch. It's got a lot of little plies in there. That's not the ugliest looking thing that I've seen, so we're going to leave that exposed. Uh, we're going to have some shelves. There's going to be two sides and a center divider. I'm going to use three quarter inch plywood everywhere except for the sliding doors in the front. The reason for that is number one, we want it to be very strong. And number two, the back panel, where we might be tempted to use a thinner material, is actually something we're going to drill into and we're going to put some dowels and things like that for storage. So we want that extra material to work with. Now let's break it down into its parts. The top, the bottom, and the sides. Now the sides and the middle are going to connect to the top and bottom via mortise and tenon joints. The top and bottom, I'm thinking at this point, will be double ply uh, two sheets of three quarters of an inch plywood giving you about an inch and a half in thickness. Why? I don't know. I'm going to do something with the top and bottom that I haven't quite figured out yet, but we'll, we'll get to that later, but hopefully it'll look cool. The back panel, we just talked about that, is going to be three quarters of an inch. We also have to have that back panel inset 
by about three quarters of an inch so that there's a three quarter of an inch gap in the back. And the reason for that is we're gonna use a French cleat for storage and you need at least three quarters of an inch clearance if you're gonna use a three quarter inch cleat in the back. The shelves are going to be dadoed into the side. So the center panel and the two sides on their inside face will have various dados at different locations for each of the shelves. We're also gonna to have to make sure that that center, uh, the center divider, that the dados on the left chamber and the right chamber are actually in different spots. We wanna stagger them, because if you put a dado on the right and a dado on the left, you may just wind up cutting that board in half. The sliding doors will be quarter inch ply. I mean, if you have some really nice material or uh, a different species, go ahead and use that because it's gonna look great. If you just have a Baltic birch case, throw some walnut doors on there or something. It's gonna look awesome. And now the two things that we don't know at this point are the overall dimensions, length, width, and depth of this cabinet, and of course the interior arrangement. Now this is gonna be very different depending on what you wanna put in yours. I'm gonna store some planes and a few different hand tools. We'll get to that but my arrangement's gonna be very different than yours. Uh, so just keep in mind what tools you have, what things you wanna keep in there, and just rearrange that interior to suit your needs. So the only thing left to do at this point is to go out to the shop, take some measurements from the actual tools, and use those as a guide to tell us how big, how deep, how tall, how wide, and all that good stuff. So let's run out to the shop and do just that. Now you can see I've got a pretty good amount of stuff on the wall already. All of my chisels, files, uh, some saws, scrapers, things like that. I'm very happy with the storage as it exists now. What I really want to put in my tool cabinet is my planes. I've never quite come up with a great storage solution, so that's really what I'm after. So of course, I've got all of my planes on the, uh, the bench here, and the idea is I want to know what are the maximum dimensions I need to be concerned with. I've got my number seven here, and that's going to be the biggest plane in my collection. So I want to know what the length is. That's going to dictate what each half of this cabinet is going to be. This would be in one half, and of course I want it to be symmetrical, so the other side of the cabinet has to be about the same width. Uh, I need to know, see I'm gonna store them in on the shelf like this. So of course, the side to side width of this plane is gonna be important because that's gonna be the height of the shelf. And if you go from the bed to the top of the handle area here, that's gonna dictate the depth of the cabinet. So all of these are numbers that I'm gonna need to write down. All these other planes, I might be able to fit two on the same shelf, you know, if I'm using this, this is about 22 inches if I remember correctly. Take a quick measurement. Yeah, it's 22. So of course I could maybe put my two smoothers on the same shelf. Okay, but really what we're looking for is the maximum dimensions. We're also looking to figure out, are there some really unusual things that we're gonna need to store in there? Um, let's go take a look at my old tool cabinet and I'll show you some of the other things that I'm gonna try and fit into this one. Now you have to excuse the crappy lighting in this spot. I'm kind of in a dark corner of the shop. So this is the old cabinet. You can see I've got my block planes, shoulder planes, some spoke shaves. Those are all things I'm gonna to wanna to store in the new one. And another thing I find really handy to have in the tool cabinet is my drill bits. I like to make these little things that you could pull out and it's really nothing more than a two by four and some holes drilled into it. But I like to store those in this cabinet. Um, I really haven't found a better place or a, a better way to store these things. So what I'm gonna to need to be concerned with are which sets I'm going to include in here and how tall they are. Because you could see, you need a good amount of space to fit some of these, like these boring bits up here. The Forstners are a little bit shorter. Uh, my Brad Point bits, things like that. You just gotta make sure you know exactly what you wanna put in there, take some measurements, give it a little bit of breathing room, because you never know, you might buy a new set in the future. Uh, but for the most part, that's really it. The big planes, these little guys, little scraper, uh, a couple of these uh, neat little ones that I've gotten from Lee Valley, um, you know, and, and the bits themselves. Uh, other than that, it's about all I really need to store in mind. So, uh, of course, the inside of my cabinet is going to be a reflection of the tools that I own. Um, but we can talk as a group and figure out storage solutions for any unusual stuff you might want to put into your tool cabinet. Now, armed with those measurements and all the things that we already know about the project, I'm gonna hop on SketchUp and I'm just gonna use it to work out a few different things in terms of proportions, just double check and make sure everything looks right. I'm not gonna render this entire thing in SketchUp. Honestly, it just, it, it's too time consuming and when you're just building a square box, sometimes I think it's unnecessary. 
So I like to go in and just make sure my dados are spaced nice and evenly, work out the locations of the shelves, make sure that the proportions of the top and bottom decorative pieces look okay, and maybe even experiment a little bit with different designs for that top and bottom, since that's probably the only place we're gonna get really creative with this project. If you're good at SketchUp and you really enjoy using it, you can do this whole thing from beginning to end on there. For me, it just takes too much time. I'd rather just use it and get the heck out of there and start building. So let's hop on the computer. Now I'm just going to use the rectangle tool to create a few boxes that represent the tool chest. Let's do one section at a time. I don't really know the height, so let's just say about 30 inches, and the width we want is 22 and a quarter inches. Notice that I'm entering the dimensions with my keyboard at the bottom right of the screen. Now I'm using the rectangle tool to draw the 3 quarter inch partition that will be between the two sections of the chest. I can then add the second 30 by 22 and a quarter inch section, and then the two outside walls of the chest. And just for the sake of visual reference, let's use the push-pull tool to pull out the sides and the partition just a few inches. Now what I'm really looking at here is the total width. I added these numbers up before, but for some reason it wasn't until I saw it in 3D space that it hit me. 46 and a quarter inches is just too darn wide. It's almost a full four feet. So it's back to the drawing board. So horizontal storage, out. We need to come up with a different solution. How about vertical? Well, if we store these vertical, you're gonna have a little bit of a, a safety issue. You gotta make sure that it's nice and secure. Now I saw this idea on the internet and I wish I could give credit to the person, but I don't remember exactly where I saw it. But they were stored vertically and not on any kind of an incline, basically right up against the back panel. And there was a little wooden clip that you could rotate around and hold the front end of the plane in place. Now I'm thinking if you could put a little groove in the bottom panel as well to catch the back end, put that into the groove, pull this thing around, and now that's gonna be pretty darn stable. I'm, I'm actually really happy with that idea. So vertical storage is, unless you have like endless wall space, vertical storage seems like the way to go if you have these longer planes like this. So now I'm looking at the arrangement, uh, putting everything flat onto the bench and seeing what I can come up with that would be a logical solution for the right side of this cabinet. Okay, so let's, let's mock up the arrangement here. I'm gonna use my purple inlay here as a guide, pretend that's the bottom of the cabinet. Put the number seven in first. Number five, I'm going to give them about a half inch, maybe a little bit less between each, each uh, plane. Here comes the number four. And I get to this point and number one, I want room to expand. So I do want some space here. I don't want to go all the way to that 22 and a quarter, but um, you know, I'd like a little bit more room just in case I pick up some more planes in the future. For now though, I think I could take my bloom smoother and lay it this way. That's going to look really cool, and it's still going to be less than the 22 and a quarter that we had before. And let's, let's see what we're looking at. It's about 19 inches. I think I can get away with 19 and a half, and let's say just to be safe and for easy calculation, 20 inches. And even at 20, when you multiply it by 2, I'm actually losing 4 and a half inches on a total width, which brings this down to a much more reasonable number. The other thing that I have to work with now is all of this extra space is just going to be a flat panel that I could work with, which means I could add some of my more oddball things into this area using pegs, you know, maybe put some shelves if I uh, feel so inclined to try and figure out a way to put them in there. Um, but at the very least with peg storage, I could fill up all this extra space and it's going to look pretty darn cool uh, at the same time. So I think this is a good um, working arrangement that we can now go with. So let's head back to the computer. Now we're going to do the same thing we did last time, only in this case we're restricting each compartment to 19 inches. Now the total width is only 40 and a quarter inches, which is a 6 inch difference from the previous design. Now another thing I'd like to use SketchUp for is to determine the length of my side pieces. I'm just going to make a very rough sketch of the arrangement from a side view. So starting from the rear, we would have a 3 quarter inch gap for the French cleat. And now this rectangle is going to represent the back panel at 3 quarters of an inch thick. Next we have a 6 inch internal storage space which should be plenty for our biggest plane. And now I'm going to draw in the sliding doors. I'm giving myself an extra eighth inch clearance and then I'll draw the first quarter inch door. 
Now we'll have a quarter inch gap between the doors, and then here's our second quarter inch door. Now just to be a little more thorough, let's draw in the grooves that the sliding doors will ride in. These are going to be about a quarter inch deep. And now from the back to the front of the door, we have eight and three eighths of an inch. Now for the actual side pieces of our case, we're going to want to clear those sliding doors by about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to call the side pieces eight and five eighths. The final thing I need SketchUp for is to help me look at a few possibilities for our top and bottom. So I start by drawing a rectangle that represents the case itself, which we now know is 8 and 5 eighths of an inch deep by 40 and a quarter inches long. The top and bottom will extend past the sides by about an inch and a half, and past the front by about 3 inches. Then I draw the outer rectangle, which represents the rough bottom. Now remember, I'm by no means a SketchUp expert, so when I'm experimenting like this, I typically do things that are not considered best practice in the world of SketchUp, and I really don't care. I'm just trying to get a ballpark visual here, and I know what I need to do to get that done. So I think what I want to do is add a gentle curve to the front, and I start by making reference marks one inch back from each front corner. I then take the curve tool, and I tap each reference mark that I just created and then bring that line to the front and you can see it gives you a nice curved line. I just erased the little uh, dog ears on the corner and I've got a pretty good representation of what I'm going for. Now just to get a better visual I'm going to use the push pull tool to extend the center rectangle upward. And now I can see how things are going to look. I'll also extend the bottom down about an inch and a half since that's really the thickness that I want. And that looks pretty good. Now here's where you can start to play a little. Let's see how things look if we maybe add a curve to the sides as well as the front. Using reference points and the curve tool, we can get an idea of whether or not this concept even has merit. Now someone may like that, I don't think it's what I'm going to use, but you can see how you could play with these things and just push and pull and do whatever you need to do without ever cutting wood, and you, you have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't. Now I've got just about every dimension and every number I could possibly need to build this piece. The one major thing that I haven't covered yet is the height. Now we know that the largest number 7 plane requires 23 inches. It's actually 22, but I want to give myself a little bit of extra clearance. And that's going to be our vertical internal dimension is 23. Now I can go with that number, but I could also go a little bit taller. So this is one of those cases where I do like to go to a design ruler, a design rule of thumb, let's say, and use something like the golden ratio to determine what would be the optimal height. Now, if you're not familiar with the golden ratio, definitely look it up. You'll see it's referred to as the golden section, the golden rectangle. It basically refers to the relationship between two sides of a, a rectangle um, in terms of how long they are. So let's say this was one inch. Obviously, it's exaggerated. This side is one inch and you want to know what would be the optimal or most visually pleasing length for the long end. And what you would do is multiply by the golden ratio number, which is 1.618 and a bunch of whole other numbers, a bunch of numbers that I don't really count. I just go 1.618 and call it a day. So you can use that math to determine, and in a situation like this when you know it's flexible, I could have the height whatever I want it to be, it's not a bad idea to do it. So let's just see what it gives us. We know that the total width of this cabinet, um, basically using the top because it's going to extend a little bit further than the case itself. So 43 and a quarter inches wide is where we're at. So I'm going to take 43 and one quarter. And in this case, I'm going to divide by 1.618 because the side to side dimension is actually the longer dimension. I don't want it to be taller than it is wide. So I'm going to divide by 1.618 and the number I get is 26 and three quarters and that's total height from the top to the very bottom. Now the top and bottom actual pieces are going to be one and a half inches thick. So if I take 26 and three quarters and I subtract three inches because each one is one and a half inches, that leaves me with 23 and three quarters of an inch and that's my internal space. Well that's fine because I, only, I really only need 23. So if I get three quarters of an inch more and I hit that golden ratio, why the heck not? So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, and now really the only thing left to do is gather the materials and start making our cuts. And we'll do that next time. Thanks for watching. 
is to A is to B. <laughs> My hands smell like rubber bands. What? Smack it like you're mad at me and it's my face. <laughs> How's my acting skills? Terrible. A little, little less face. <laughs> Please. Will I win an Oscar? Yeah. How about a daytime Emmy? No. That's not very attractive. It, it really, is that what I'm going for in my videos is attractiveness? When did that become a priority? <laughs>